Thank you, Representative Sane. I want to give a shout out to, to Jim Buck. I've been working alongside with Jim Buck for 10 years and appreciate your leadership this year and Alec and I want everybody to recognize Senator Buck one more time. I also uh, want to thank Ed Emery for a, an outstanding prayer and getting us off on the right foot in this meeting. Thank you, Ed. Wow. I hate to be following what we had this morning. Wasn't that awesome? The four rock star economists, I think, in our country were right here having a, a living room discussion. Uh, I'm an accountant by trade and kind of an accountant mind, but there's economics going on in my head all the time. Uh, I got a minor in economics in my undergraduate degree at Utah State University, so this was just awesome for me to watch that this morning. Uh, like each of you, I'm d determined to find pressing, or I'm determined to find solutions to pressing issues that affect our state. Education is at the top of the list. Utah has a growing student population. Education is the largest part of our budget. You know, we talk about taxes today. But education is huge for us as policymakers in our states. As a result, we as legislators ask many questions and engage in meaningful school policy each year. Questions like, what is the cost of undereducated students? This is a frequent discussion. We know the costs are substantial. These are students that don't graduate find themselves involved in crime, are statistically more likely to be an economic drain on society. The effect on state and local budgets is enormous. As a result, the state has a considerable policy, a considerable policy interest in this area of discussion. In Utah, there are many underserved students. In many cases, these students are concentrated in neighborhoods and in schools that are proven uh, that to be under-equipped to help the student reach their innate potential. Despite our best efforts, we've had limited success in addressing the needs of our low-performing schools. However, this isn't just a Utah problem. For over a decade, progress in the U.S. has been flat, as you can see in the graph and the NAEP scores. This means that the chronically underperforming schools are still chronically underperforming. The problem has been difficult with no clear solutions. There have been many intelligent educators working to improve student outcomes for years, but the data shows no real improvement. As a, legislature, as a legislator, I feel the urgency to improve outcomes and stop waiting and watching for change to occur, to occur slowly or not at all. One example of well-intended effort is the Federal School Improvement Grant. Billions have been invested with little to no progress with our chronically underperforming schools. It became clear to me a few years ago that the situation called for a new way of thinking. This journey started in 2013. The Speaker of the House and myself co-chaired a two-year education task force. In September 2014, the first school grades in our assessment system were published. Discrimination had been one of the arguments against the school grading system. The narrative was this. If a school student base consisted of 90% of the students receiving free or reduced lunch, or and or 60% of the students being English lang language learners, then they had no chance of receiving anything but a letter grade of F. 
Surprising to many, including myself, we found nine schools with this demographic that received the letter grade of B or A. What were these schools doing differently? We asked them. The principals of these schools graciously agreed to come and tes testify before our task force. We discovered some common elements. First, each of the nine passionately believed that every student can learn. Sometimes it's just a matter of attitude. Second, each principal had received special training in changing student outcomes. Third, there was a thorough implementation of evidence-based practices. And fourth, the principal was deeply involved in the process and with the teachers, parents, and the community. This was a watershed discovery for me and for the task force. Addressing the issue was so important that I chose as president of the Senate to be the bill sponsor despite my responsibilities to preside on the floor of the Senate. A group of stakeholders and experts from inside and outside of government were assembled to draft the bill. The effort of three months of discussion resulted in Senate Bill 235, the School Turnaround and Leadership Development Act. The bill focused on three major elements deep implementation of evidence-based practices, access to outside expertise in supporting school turnaround, and pay for performance in our public-private partnerships. In addition, we focused on school leadership development, training the principal. You'll see a handout on your table with some of the details of the bill has the three little circles on it. Also, in the ALEC Education Task Force this afternoon, the bill we passed in Utah will be considered for model legislation. The bill details include identifying the lowest performing schools. We chose the bottom 3%, which was a matter of money more than anything else. Selecting expert turnaround partners based on their demonstrated, and let me emphasize demonstrated, expertise in evidence-based practices, letting schools choose the partner they preferred from a pool of turnaround experts the state had selected, and finally, we included pay for performance. The turnaround experts only get paid a large portion of their fee if the schools improve and if, that, and if that improvement sustains over three years. We focused on training and rebuilding the leadership, faculty and staff, rather than a full replacement and rehire. The result, the legislation has worked. The data speaks for itself. Contrast this to the national trends we just saw earlier. Here are the most important considerations you want to understand as you consider this policy in your state. And I emphasize, objective outside experts are critical. Appropriating money alone doesn't work. And it starts with leadership development. The principle is key to this effort. Focus on professional development and coaching. Pay per performance is paramount. If you improve, then you get paid. The legislature has an interest in this issue. It affects much of what we do, and our taxpayers expect results. I conclude with the words of Albert Einstein. We can't solve problems by using the same kind of thinking we used when we created them.